Hello, clearing out some files and uh, this is the cover sheet to a very famous book by George Agricola, De Re Metallica or De Re Metallica, part of my uh, Latin there, but uh, well Metallica now, it's an interesting book because it's, and it was reprinted uh, maybe in the 40s or the 50s, it goes back to the uh, 1500s and it's a quite a long book and I'll put the link in the description because you can get the PDF um, uh, downloaded but it's a book describing mining and metal processing and so for instance here we see some of the machinery uh, used again simple machines wheels cogs gears levers and pulleys um, here's an like interesting because it shows here now the processes of of refining the ore and this, if you want to have a look, again, it's a very, like 800 pages or something, but we, again, we see how the metal was processed, uh, refined. Very interesting um, piece of work. Again, it's very long and I haven't studied it in, in any detail, something I'm hoping to do in the future. But also interesting how they use certain plants to do certain procedures. I'll get back to this picture in a moment. But again, just showing how the... Well, this is the 1500s, but this 1500s technology equates to, uh, well, basically the Greco-Roman era, era and earlier to that. This, all this machinery, this technology, uh, for example, the Antikythera mechanism, uh, Heron, uh, the great, the inventor of steam power. This goes, there were some really, really cool inventions. Uh, well, again, not even... What was in the 1500s really goes back uh, thousands of years before that, and there's quite a bit of evidence for uh, for this. Maybe in some details, maybe not, but at least the vast majority of it. Um, that uh, again, people have been uh, working metal and the associated processes, basically all under alchemy. We would call it metallurgy or chemistry now. Back then, it was called alchemy, metal working, glass working. Uh, even down to uh, pharmacy and this type of thing. But again, links will be in the description. It just shows some of the, with some very simple techniques, some very simple understanding what they were, were able to uh, achieve and uh, using this. But uh, where are we? Okay, just again, uh, these processes are quite um, old. Well, people have been working iron, bronze, and copper back before record. Uh, well, maybe, okay, not iron, but. Uh, Iron was available, sky iron, for instance, and, okay, but this is a, now, why I uh, want to focus on this picture, uh, divining for metals, uh, among miners there are many great arguments about the forked twig, for some say it is of greatest use to them in discovering veins, while others deny this. Now, recently, someone on my G Plus feed posted about, it was found out that, like, well, I forget the exact number, but basically 9 out of 10 water companies in England at the moment, their technicians use divining rods to find underwater pipes. And if you read, uh, I'll try and find the article and put the link in the description, but if you read it, how upset people get about divining rods. Now these are technicians, these are the guys, if it didn't work, they wouldn't be using it. There would be, you know, they would be finding false pipes, pipes that weren't there, pipes would be broken, it would, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of people, thousands, tens of thousands of people would have their water supply interrupted. The angry people who didn't like the fact that they were using dividing rods point this out, but they don't sort of seem to point out. Well, the fact was that the, you know that these companies, these technicians, they're the guys who know what they're doing. They have a long history, a long experience with this. They would not be using it if it was prone to error. And yet, you know, you know they're not busting pipes left and right. They're not, you know, they're finding these old pipes. Reason why I mentioned this forked twig and the dowsing is I'm going to put a link in the description to a documentary called Geopathic Stress. Highly, highly recommended. I don't, you know, I'm not um, promoting it or whatever, but I think it's, you know, it's important to keep an open mind with some things. And there are some very interesting observations in this documentary, uh, Geopathic Stress, especially around about uh, 30 minute onwards, because they visit a certain, uh, it's now the headquarters for the Scottish... EPA and was built by a rather famous architect and they and both this gentleman here who uses modern scientific methods and this gentleman here who uses dowsing rods they find the same 
things. They find the same ele- uh, the same things that are happening to this particular building. So what they do is they find that there's a well. That's I'm just going to use uh, layman's terms. There's an energy line which you know bad energy approaches this particular building by this particular architect. But as they get close to the building, the line stops, and then it then the energy line re-emerges on the other side of the building. I think this is important implication because especially they're talking about underwater, uh, sorry, underground water channels and places like Chartres Cathedral and, and well, many other cathedrals which are built on even older ancient sites tend to be built on places where underground water tends to cross. And as uh, this gentleman on the right explains later, this is a very bad, you should not build your building on these, well, you should not build your house, you should not sleep on these particular lines. And again, very interesting. I'll put geopathic stress documentary. The link will be in the description. I'll try and put, uh, well, I will put the D or De Ray Metallica, D Ray Metallica uh, PDF in the description as well. And that's, that's what, again, just to try to be a short one, just to find what it's interesting because why I think it's especially interesting is when you find, uh, well, there, there are ancient mine sites which are underground. Now, it's one thing to follow a vein from ground level and follow it underground but there are many ancient mining sites which are you, they had to dig down to find them and so they, the, the, the vein does not appear on the ground yet they were able to find these underground veins now uh, if you dug a thousand test pits you wouldn't necessarily hit upon them and and the the, the landscape isn't covered with these ancient test pits to find these subterranean um, veins of ore and, and other precious materials Yet somehow in antiquity, people knew where to dig and it wasn't, again, it's not about following a, a vein which is above ground and, and following an underground. There are ancient mines where, where, where you had to dig down tens of, of feet to find these places. How did they find them? Well, the people who, who did it and just like now water dividers are still using this and they swear by it and out of uh, some... Uh, discussions I've had with people, they seem to, you know, they, they really, really hold on to this. Now, I'm skeptical by by nature, and I think there's always questions to be asked. We shouldn't um, accept anything uh, immediately, but that also goes for the opposite. So, when it comes to skepticism, skepticism, it tends to be anything which is, in inverted commas, fringe, you should be skeptical of, but if it's in a textbook, you should uh, read it as gospel. Well, you just go through your history and you'll find how often the gospel of the textbooks turns out to be wrong. Compare a modern textbook to an older one and you'll see how things change. And I think that's just one of these unfortunate things with the so uh, The modern skeptic community is not really skeptical. They're, they're dogmatic because they, they hold on to a, a certain dogma and they will and, and that one they will accept as gospel. Uh, however, Yes, okay, that's something now I'm ranting on. But again, just an interesting point. Links will be in the description. It's uh, this is something I've been looking into the last few years. Uh, very interesting. Again, how did these ancient miners find these subterranean um, sites? Again, one thing to follow above ground vein below ground. It's very different to find something underground unless you dig a million test pits uh, across, you know, and again, people are not going to do that, you know. Um, they And there is no evidence of, thousands and thousands of test pits to, to, to spot the exact spot where you will find a copper iron um, uh, ore deposit. So again, links in the description. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, again, just a series of not promoting anything, just uh, sharing this. I've sort of been sit, just been sitting in the folder for a while for it's of interest. Have a good one.